This week's episode is made possible by our friends at Independent Bank. You can learn more about them at i-bankonline.com. Good morning, Memphis. You're listening to Meanwhile in Memphis on WYXR Radio 91.7 FM. Meanwhile in Memphis is a program dedicated to conversations that celebrate the organizations, initiatives, and people that are shaping Memphis for the better. The Meanwhile in Memphis radio show and podcast are brought to you by New Memphis, a nonprofit organization whose mission is to develop, activate, and retain the city's most important resource, its people. Your hosts today are me, Rebecca Hamm, and my colleague, Anna Thompson. Before we get started today, we have some community engagement events we want you to put on your calendar. You can always stay up to date on the happenings of New Memphis at newmemphis.org slash events. We have an upcoming Teacher's Lounge exclusively for educators on September 10th over at Swamp Bar, where educators can hear from one of the 2023 New Memphis Educators of Excellence, Kareth Griffin, discussing the topic of It Takes a Village. You can also join New Memphis for Memphis 101 on September 17th at the Brooks Museum of Art. Memphis 101 offers all Memphians, not just newcomers, an opportunity to network, engage with organizations and attractions that help define Memphis as a thriving community and to deepen your personal connection to the city. Memphis 101 is made possible in partnership with Regional One Health. And finally, the TEDx Memphis Conference is right around the corner on September 28th. Head over to TEDx-Memphis.com for more information and to purchase your tickets. Today, we're learning a little bit more about an aspect of health and well-being that impacts not only individuals, but also employees and our city overall. As a supplement to medically-based health care, mindful wellness programs can have a positive impact on productivity, effectiveness, and the general health of individuals, organizations, and communities. Joining us to talk about that today are Taylor Summerville and Kemp Conrad. Taylor founded Symmetry in 2018 after working in the investment business for 15 years. Taylor was overstressed, anxious, and short-tempered, and felt like he was out of control. Taylor discovered breathwork and other key practices as a way to deal with the stress and anxiety of his personal life. Now, he helps high-achieving, busy professionals take back control of their lives so that they have more time, more energy, and less stress. Kemp Conrad is a principal at Cushman and Wakefield Commercial Advisors. Kemp is a commercial real estate advisor, former city council member, Pure Youth Academy board member, endurance athlete, and a graduate of the New Memphis LDI program. Let's welcome Kemp and Taylor. Welcome, Kemp and Taylor. We're so excited to have you all in the studio with us this morning. Um, Let's get started by having each of you share a little bit about yourselves and your respective roles. So Kemp, we can start with you. Great. Uh, My name is Kemp Conrad. Great to to be here to Today, thanks for uh, for having us on. Um, I'm with the uh, Cushman and Wakefield Commercial Advisors. Um, we're a full service commercial real estate uh, firm uh, here in the in the city of Memphis. Awesome. And Taylor, my name is Taylor Somerville. Thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, I'm the founder of Symmetry, and we help high achieving, busy people take back control of their lives. They have more time, more energy, and less stress. Ooh, what a tagline! <laughs> I love it. Hits all the major things. We all so, need it. We do. We definitely do. So we're excited to have y'all in the studio today as a new school year begins. I feel like everybody's anxiety is always a little higher in that way. I mean, I know as a parent, mine is. Um, and then, you know, some people's fiscal year is wrapping up. Some are just starting. Everything else is kind of headed into the holiday season here soon. So you never can tell what's going to be a trigger for stress. That's right. So Taylor, can you tell us a little bit of background about yourself and why you founded Symmetry? Yeah, so I spent 15 years uh, in the investment business. The last 10 years, I was at McVean Trading on the trading floor, worked in the economics group, a uh, very high stress environment. Uh, then about a decade ago, I went through a divorce and was, uh, you know, just dealing with a lot of personal and professional stress, uh, having trouble to handle it. I uh, was very short tempered, uh, very easy to kind of just not able to handle what was going on. And I found meditation. Uh, I found breath work and they changed my life. It changed how I was able to deal with not only myself and the stress that I was going through personally and professionally, but with other people. Uh, and just was able to kind of ride the waves of life a little bit easier and you know, not get rid of stress because that's not something we want to do. Uh, we really actually like stress. It's, it's a good thing. We just have to learn how to use it. Uh, and in 2017, 
I went on, it's called uh, this XBT experience. It's kind of basically a retreat, uh, very into breath work, uh, into hot and cold exposure, uh, and kind of intense workout experience. People, you know, high performing people all over from, you know, finance, doctors, lawyers to Olympic medalists and uh, professional athletes. Got back from there and was like, okay, I, I don't really want to do what I've been doing anymore. <laughs> I'd already had an inkling for that and quit my job three months later. Started Symmetry within the next year, really uh, became one of their first coaches uh, for the group XBT and then expanded out of that. So I started Symmetry in 2018 and have you know modified it and grown it since those years. And actually Kemp was uh, one of my first clients back uh six years ago i'm an og i love it i love it so what um what was the connection here like what was the initial why why camp were you attracted to symmetry and taylor's services at symmetry oh gosh i I think as i was sitting here before we went on the air kind of thinking about it i think i first saw maybe on instagram maybe with i think like maybe with richard smith or something i think taylor was doing probably like these pool workouts and this other stuff he does called heat nice which we'll talk about which which are kind of anchors of my week uh, which is basically like hot and cold contrast therapy where you um, get in a superheated sauna that's over like 200 degrees for 15 minutes and in an ice bath for three minutes and you do it three three times. Uh, we'll be doing it uh, this afternoon. We've got, there's a great core group that does it. There are about eight eight people that, you know, kind of cycle in and out. But I was like, what what is this? And so I got, I think we went to lunch and then, you know, that so it was really more the heat and ice, the, the fire and ice. We can talk more about that. Um, and, uh, that, that's where I first kind of started, started working with, with Taylor, um, many, many, many years ago. And, uh, and there's, uh, you know, it was just a great way, a much more healthier way to, to deal with, you know, with stress. Um, candidly, I was probably relying too much on, not probably, I, I relied exclusively on, uh, on alcohol to relieve stress. And I, I think a lot of people mm-hmm. do, especially through COVID. I think there's been a big shift now. Um, af- after COVID, um, uh, you know, talking to restaurateurs and people that run, um, you know, own big uh, liquor stores, you know, that they, they say the trends are really changing away from that now, but it, it really became a great outlet for me to, um, deal with stress in a, in a much more positive way. And, uh, and it was really kind of a gateway to just a healthier lifestyle. And I'm sure we'll talk about the, the symmetry six, which are kind of Taylor's foundational, um, things around kind of healthy living, but it's, uh, it's like a whole new universe opened up and, uh, it was just been super, super helpful to me. So but that's how it got started. I love it. So what a lovely segue. Thank you, Kemp. Um, the, the symmetry six Taylor. So we look at breath, look at mindset, nutrition, uh, movement, rest and relationships. Okay. You know, those are really like the core of a healthy life if okay. you're looking at um most people when they try to make changes they go towards maybe they start exercising a little bit more changing their diet and they kind of completely let go of the others we look at breath as number one because that's the foundation that's the first thing we do and it's the last thing we do and it's the only system in our body that is automatic yet it's under our control so we can Ooh. use it to change our mental and physical state we can use it to calm us down in stressful situations we can use it to ramp us up and get you know more activated give us more energy if we need to and, you know, it also affects every system in our body. So if our breath is off, it's going to automatically put us in a more stressed state. It's going to make things like our heart work harder. It's going to make our digestion obvious good. It's going to, um, you know, really affect every area. And then we're looking at the mindset, how you think, the stories you tell yourself, uh, which is very big. Most of us, you know, limit our lives and our everything about us because we tell ourselves negative stories. We can't do something. We're not, you know not doing things well enough or we don't like xyz a lot of people say i don't like the cold well is that true or have you just been telling yourself your whole life and not really tried it out uh and rest is a big aspect because sleep is so important Mm -hmm. uh and luckily over the last few years the breath and things like sleep have really become more in vogue and there's a lot more research about it and people realize how important it is um but those are some key areas and then relationships because if you don't have a community and you don't have people who can build you up uh you know nothing really is going to go well for you uh you look at like blue zones and areas like that one of the big things with those groups is the community aspect they're always together families together friends together uh you know continuously throughout their life and i think that's one of the biggest aspects of those kind of areas 
So for those who might not know what blue zones are. They're the areas in the world where have the highest um, prevalence of people who are you know, centenarians over 100 years old. Okay. Good deal. Thank you. There is actually a documentary about that on Netflix. That's right. And I, yes, I found it incredibly interesting. One of my COVID watches. So <laughs> again, back to that. <laughs> so Taylor, you mentioned community a few times uh, in in explaining this, kind of the root of this work. And can, you haven't just engaged with this work personally. It's something that your organization is engaging with Taylor. And can you talk to us a little bit about what that looks like? Yeah, sure. So, you know, just to working with Taylor and, you know, there's like, there, there's so much science behind this and it's all, it's all like, like every piece of these different pillars, it's like its own universe. Like, you know, people talk about like breath work or the importance of sleep and, um, you know, that like it, it, there's, there's just like, there's so many books and it's, it's all so deep and, the, and it's also like science backed and it's, and, uh, there's just so much out there. And one of the things we want to do at our company, we're, we just want to make sure that we're, you know, a great employer and, um, we designed basically Taylor designed a program. It was a, basically like a cohort cause you know, the kind of the community aspect where, uh, we gave all of our team members, we, we employ about, we have about 70 team members here in, in Memphis and, uh, we gave everybody the, the chance to do it. We did want people to have a little bit of skin in the game. So the company paid the, for, you know, the majority of the cost, we had a a very small kind of piece that we wanted our team members to pay, but we met monthly. And, uh, so we hit each of the symmetry six twice over that 12 month period. And so, uh, Taylor would come in and, uh, his partner, Lauren would come in and, uh, and would do a session on each of these and they provide resources, um, books to read, you know, articles to link to, and it was also very active. So we, we did breath work. We did, you know, the fire and ice. We, we did some yoga. We, you know, we, we talked about all, all these different things. And uh, it really, really helped people. So, you know, now, you know, I see people all the time that went through the, through the cohort. You know, they'll be walking during their lunch hour or, you know, they're, they'll take the, you know, they take the stairs now instead of the elevator. So just little things like this that over time, you know, r- uh, really add up. But it was, it was a really, really good experience that I think, it was a holistic approach to, you know, kind of overall uh, health and wellness, and uh, the feedback that we got was was uh, was was just re- really really positive. Having a healthy and happy team is is so crucial, <laughs> um, I think, for any organization. Um, have you seen a change in the way that your team approaches their work, in the way that they work with each other, or is it just a personal transformation? Um, I, I think it's both personal. I think, I think it's definitely a personal transformation, but I, I definitely think it, um, yeah, it affects the way that people deal with stress if people aren't getting, you know, frustrated with other coworkers or, you know, um, you know, clients. It just, it, I think it just teaches you how to, how to show up better. And if you're, you know, if you're sleeping better, if you're more fit, if you're eating, you're just going to be a better, you know, a better version of, of, of yourself, if you will. Um, so yeah. And Taylor, I think earlier in the conversation, you mentioned that stress doesn't always have to be a negative. Mm -hmm. That's right. Can you talk to us about that? Yeah. I mean, stress is, it's not good or bad. It just is. Uh, and it is, you know, where we hear so much in modern society is that it's bad and that it causes all these chronic issues, which is correct. Uh, chronic stress is a bad thing. You know, what we need is we need, you know, high like doses of stress, such as, you know, going up and giving a presentation. That's a stressor. Doing a workout. That's a stressor. Putting yourself into these situations and then bringing yourself down. So your nervous system, we have the sympathetic, which is that fight or flight. We have the parasympathetic rest, relaxation, digestion. Nowadays, most people are kind of stuck in this like chronic sympathetic, which is chronic stress, which comes from uh, we never turn off. We have... Uh, news media coming at us. We have social media. We have things like the election coming up. We There's always something to be worried about. And you're not sleeping properly. You're not breathing properly. You kind of amp up that sympathetic. So you're kind of in this low-grade stress, always worrying, always anxious, thinking about maybe what's next going to fall. Um, and what we like to look at is you think about stress plus rest equals growth. So you stress yourself, then you rest, and that's how you grow. It's kind of like pushing slightly outside of your comfort zone. Uh, and there's all sorts of research on, you know, how this kind of affects the mind, the body, the nervous system. Uh, we're very big on learning that and understanding it and kind of giving those principles to our clients. So learning that 
you don't want to just lay on the couch all day. That's not stressful. That could be relaxing, but you're just going to waste <laughs> away. Not going to get better. Nothing's going to happen. So you got to put yourself into uncomfortable situations, learn to deal with it, recover, and then do a little bit more. So you kind of constantly pushing the envelope. That's how you become better at your work. It's how you become better in your relationships as well. Uh, having difficult conversations that a lot of us want to shy away from, what happens there? They just end up blowing up later on. Uh, so we got we got to learn how to put ourselves into hard situations, and then we got to bring ourselves down. And that's one of the great things. You know, Kent mentioned the heat and ice. That's one of the things I like about that. There's a, a host of physical benefits of that, but it's really putting yourself into a difficult difficult situation, learning how to breathe, learning how to bring your your mind under control, your body under control. And then you can take those in that same breathing techniques that we do there. You can take it into other situations in your life. Uh, when you get stressed out at work, when you're you know, in Memphis, when you're just driving down the road um, and you can kind of learn how to recover from those aspects as well. What does constructive rest look like? Uh, well, there's a whole host doing a breathing session uh, is a great five to 10 minutes. Just some simple con- conscious breathing. Uh, slowing your breath down, connecting with your breath, that's one way. Uh, meditation is another way. Could be going for a walk in nature is a great way as well. Um, you know, obviously sleep is is a good way. Um, it's anything that's going to kind of get your mind out of consistently thinking and take your body down. Um, you know, taking your nervous system down a little bit. So it is, uh, it doesn't have to be just laying around. Think about just a little bit of active movement, it could be like yoga class. I mean, there's many varieties uh, that we work on with people as well. And we like one, um, something that's called non-sleep deep rest is basically like a 20-minute session where you kind of guide, they're guided um, techniques that get your bra- your brain waves into almost like a deep sleep. Um, it's a good way to recover in the middle of the afternoon. Some people nap. It's a good way to help yourself go to sleep at night. Uh, but it kind of is like a progressive relaxation, taking yourself a little bit internal uh, and great way to downregulate. It's been popularized in the last you know couple of years by um, you know, people in the health and wellness community like Andrew Huberman and some uh, big doctors along the lines like that. We, that's something we really love to, to downregulate the nervous system as well. Yeah. Also, also, I guess, known as Yoga Nidra, right? Correct. Yep. And there's like, great, you can just go. You know, Google it on YouTube or whatever, and there's like I, I'll I'll do it like if I'm kind of feeling tired, like midday, late in the day, you can find one and just you know they've got like they've got some that are ten minutes, twenty minutes, yeah. thirty minutes, and and uh, literally it's it's like you're you go to sleep but you wake up or whatever it's over and then you feel <laughs> maybe I do go to sleep but you feel uh, I mean it, it's like it's like you just got a full night's sleep like you're very energized and again that's all backed in science. There's a lot of science behind all the things that Taylor does and that uh, he and we are talking about today. But uh, yeah, that, that's, that's well, an, really good. Another great aspect you mentioned doing it midday. It's great to do after you've learned something new mm-hmm. because it helps increase the learning capacity by like 30, 40%, which is what happens when we sleep. We process our memories, we process information um, and it's an easy way to do it. So you go through a deep learning spell. Maybe you're doing 90 minutes of, you know, thinking about something you do 15, 20 minute, uh, an SDR session and you're going to take that information in better. So and we have a, quite a few um, that I've created and uh, Lauren Bestel, who's another coach with me, we've created that we have in our member area that we give to clients these days as well. Oh, I need to look, I'm gonna check, check those out. Yeah. They're, they're relatively new over the last few months. Uh, okay. I have so many you. questions. I have so many questions. Um, so what you're saying is Taylor that me drinking copious amounts of caffeine and then taking a melatonin to go to sleep at night is not the ideal format. That is a pretty, <laughs> it might put you to sleep, but most likely you're not getting that deep sleep. Okay. So we, okay. one of the things we like to tell, need um, to get off the rat race. tell clients, yeah. is, exactly. And that's going to keep you in that more chronically stressed state. Okay. So drinking caffeine, I love coffee, love caffeine. You know, ideally you want to finish it at least seven hours before you're going to bed. Okay. Caffeine's half-life is pretty long uh and while we think it might not affect us and some people do metabolize it better than others that is you know definitely true um i would say cut it back try to get it not have it not have it after about two o'clock in the afternoon and uh see how you respond so this was not um part of my original question but 
the NSDR, the non-sleep deep rest, do you foresee it having a place in the school system moving forward after like deep learning? Do you think like a 10 minute? I mean, I think it would be great if schools did that along with got the kids outside and more active and moved because that also affects your mental health. Um, whether or not the school systems, maybe it'll take them a while because I don't think they move very fast. But, but um, yeah, it's I not think that would be for, very, yeah. yes, mindfulness um, processes as well. You know, that all helps with their emotional reactivity, their ability to learn and process information. Uh, slow controlled breathing also turns on the, the prefrontal cortex, that kind of rational side of your brain. So you're able to process, think, focus better as well. That's why some schools do incorporate that now. Uh, in the middle, you know, to kind of to start the day as well. And there's some good organizations uh, around the country that are really doing a lot of research and work and trying to get that out into the schools as well. Uh, a group called the Health and Human Performance Foundation, which is very focused on um, better ways to manage stress. And one of those using breath as opposed to um, necessarily pharmacological and techniques like that, trying to, you know, we all have these tools inside of us. We just need to learn how to use them. Yeah, too. Um, I, I had the privilege of you know, serving on the city council for about a decade, and we had uh, my term end at the end of 19, so right when Taylor was kind of getting started. But Taylor came and did a, a breathwork session for a council retreat that we had, and it was, man, people were, were blown away. It was, you know, if we had Taylor down there every uh, other Tuesday, we, w- we probably would not have fought so much. Uh, but I know he also did it, uh, Mayor Harris and the, uh, the right, county yep. commission. And uh, and it, again, it was it was super impactful. And so yeah, the, these these techniques are are good for all ages. I'm on the board of a uh, a boarding school called Pure Pure Youth Academy, uh, which is in Whitehaven, which is a all boys you know boarding school. And uh, a lot of these kids have been through some pretty traumatic experiences. And uh, Taylor's work with them as well. So we've had them out for the fire and ice, and you know done done the breath work and and things like that. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's very very it's, it, they're, they're they're just great tools that people of all ages can, can learn. So they would certainly be, um, would do great, uh, wonders in, in the school system if they could, you know, the teachers could benefit yeah. it, the parents, the administrators, the kids. I mean, um, you know, th- this is what humans have used for, you know, thousands of years to, um, self-regulate, uh, if you will. So there's a lot out there that's, that's within us that can be accessed, um, to improve the way we all feel. Then yeah, we actually have a, program uh 10 day breathing program is called breathing for kids uh and it is for younger kids uh really going through some basic techniques it's got a video for the parents and a video for them to do with the, with the kids as well uh and lauren vessel she kind of put that together about a year ago and so that's a you know something that we sell and uh can't remember how much it is but it's uh you know you get 10 10 days worth of videos to kind of do with your kids and teach and you can kind of work with them going forward for the even the younger kids Love that. We can definitely link that in the show notes for listeners who are interested in utilizing that resource. We talked a lot about how breath work can be beneficial for individuals, but it can also increase productivity in the workplace. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's a study from the American Institute of Stress that reported job related stress is one of the leading causes of stress for American adults, and it costs over $300 billion annually to employers. That is not an insignificant number. Uh, And stress results in diminished productivity, employee turnover, insurance costs, legal costs, absenteeism, and workers' compensation claims. Uh, But there are some organizations who have implemented uh, mindful wellness programs similar to what Symmetry offers, uh, those being Aetna and Google. And Aetna estimated that it saved $2,000 in healthcare cost per employee and gained $3,000 in increased productivity by incorporating programs like this. Can you talk to us about what that looks like? And is that a benefit that could potentially be included in HSA? It could be included. That is uh, somewhat dependent on the HSA, Uh, you know, but nowadays they are starting to do more preventative measures and and cover things like that. I know they even cover saunas and stuff along those lines. So it is dependent on that HSA uh, in particular, but it, but it could potentially be covered. Uh, You know, so that's definitely something that's possible. I think too, along those lines, I mean, w- one of the things we're not victims, right? And I was so much of healthcare costs today. You, you were talking about healthcare costs are they're, they're simply lifestyle choices mm-hmm. and, um, a, a lot of them. So I got on uh, grok. So since we have XAI, a huge new 
a corporate citizen uh, here in Memphis. Uh, I got on uh, Grok and uh, looked at what percent of healthcare costs are our lifestyle choices. And about half to two thirds. And then it said 80% of cardiovascular, 90% of type two diabetes, which is big here in Memphis. And then 40% um, of cancer or, or, you know, so a lot of it, a lot of it's nutrition, you know, it's what we, it's what we eat. And uh, which is one of the, one of the, one of Taylor symmetry six. So I think one of these things is like, each of these are kind of a, a pathway, if you will, to like a greater level of awareness and what, and they all, once you start doing the, these things, you know, you, you do, you start feeling better, you start looking better, you have more energy and it's kind of like a flywheel and, uh, you know, not, nothing is static in life. You're, you're either, you're either getting better or you're, you're getting worse, right? You're moving towards uh, a longer, healthier life or you're moving towards, you know, dying earlier and having the last 10 years of your life be, you know, really bad. And so the things that can be done in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, whenever. I mean, I, you know, I've lost th- 30 pounds um, since I since I kind of met Taylor and started doing this stuff. I mean, I ran across the Grand Canyon and back last year, almost 50 miles. You know, I never thought I, you know, so it's all, um, you just have to start, you know, and so the breath work is an easy, easy way to do it and, and these things that we're talking about, but they can have enormous impacts on people's lives and the lives of their families and hopefully, you know, generations on down the line. And it's not, it's not hard, but it just it just starts with kind of taking that that first step. So maybe for people listening, they'll they'll hear this and and want to change the trajectory of their mm-hmm. lives. And it's it's not hard at all, and uh, it's quite fun actually. It starts with creating that awareness uh, from creating awareness around our habits, what we do, uh, what stresses us out. Then we can create change. But it all starts with the awareness. And you know, you mentioned like cardiovascular issues. Uh, we you know one of the things with the breath is it actually shown to lower your blood pressure. So what do we typically do we, in America? We go to a pill. That's just an easy way to go after a symptom, but you're not fixing any root cause. Well, yes, we need those medicines, and they do serve their purpose. Uh, with you know, Some recent studies shown just five to ten minutes a day of slow, controlled breathing, you know, which basically think about breathing in for four seconds, pause, out for four seconds for a month is shown to lower your blood pressure just as effectively as blood pressure medication. Also a recent study on, uh, which looked at a kind of a meta-analysis or a study of studies, uh, you know, shows that breath work is just as effective or more effective than cognitive behavioral therapy and other types of therapy in reducing stress, anxiety, and depression as well. Um, and one of the parts of that study, they looked at 12 studies. They were so significant that it would take another 69 studies to negate what they came up with, which was the positive benefits on that stress. And it's just five to 10 minutes a day. You know, that's all it has to start. That's less than 1% of your day. Uh, you know, and one of the big areas where we start with clients is you know, a lot of people look at the stuff and they're like, I don't have so much time to do this. Look at the transitions in your day. How often are you sitting there scrolling on your phone? How often are you just wasting time doing nothing? You can come in, connect with your breath, go internal, understand how how you're breathing, how you're getting stressed out. Are you breathing in and out of your mouth as you're driving down the road, breathing into your upper chest? Just shift it and think about breathing in through your nose, breathing lower and breathing slower. And that's a great way to just begin to make a little change to anybody that's listening to this right now that's why try to just start breathing in through your nose breathe down into your belly and then breathe at a slower rate that automatically is going to help get you into a less stressed state you mentioned um one of the symmetry six i kind of heard it as like self-talk like the the narrative that you in your head the mental kind of Mm -hmm. The, the stuff you say to yourself and even at the beginning Kim, when you were like I started with the hot and cold the fire and ice and I was like not for me I was like immediately that was like my knee-jerk reaction that's what everybody says usually yep. but then they do it and they <laughs> love it so yeah so there's it, a reason culture's been doing it for thousands of years so it's just funny though that that was like part of the symmetry six it was like you have to be able to like overcome some of that yeah. mentally to even just give it a try well, to maybe, see I mean, what you're capable of yeah like but the, I mean the the breath work killers talk about is you know it's, it's, it's easy right super easy um I, I think some of this too, it's like, um, like d- doing, like we're, we're all capable of one of the things that I've really come to learn through all this and working with Taylor is like, we're all capable of so much more 
than than I than, than we think we are. Uh, um, and that that kind of gets to the kind of the stories that we that we tell ourselves. And so that that's one thing just about the fire and ice or like starting your day doing something hard that, that you don't want to do. So just doing like a cold shower or 30 seconds in a cold shower. It's hard to take a cold shower in Memphis in the summertime because the water doesn't get that cold when it's 100 degrees outside because <laughs> it just doesn't. But um, in the fall, in the winter, and even if you're a seasoned practitioner of you know cold water exposure or whatever, you still don't really want to do it. But after you do it, you f- you feel great. And again, there's a tons of you know science uh, behind this. But part of it is just training your mindset to do hard things or start your day doing something hard. And once you do that, it makes all the other things in your day that are that are hard that we all face a lot easier to. Uh, to do, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, one of my other favorite sayings is like, mood follows action. Like, I had to do interval runs this morning. They're really, really hard. I didn't want to do it. I made myself do it. And it sets my day in a, in a totally different way. So, you know, you, you feel better after you do it. So your mood follows your action. But I think trying to get in the mindset of doing hard things, and then again, it leads you on um, because lot, you know, lot life is hard doing, you know, big things in life is hard. No, nothing is easy. So you kind of just got to choose which hard you want. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, but this hard can be fun too. Yeah. And you mentioned starting your day. That's a, another area where we work with all of our clients, creating morning routines, eating routines to set your day up correctly. And what do most people do? They wake up. First thing they do is check their phone, look at, emails or social media or the news what is that going to do that's going to take your brain right there and focus on something else that's going to drive the rest of your day might already make you anxious and worried and upset about something you can spend five minutes breathing take a cold shower like kemp mentioned and then start your day yeah it doesn't take like an hour-long routine like people like to say on instagram and social media All it takes is 10 to 15 minutes. Everybody's got 10 to 15 minutes. And if you don't, you can just set your alarm clock for 10 to 15 minutes earlier and start that way. But you said we needed sleep, Taylor. Yeah. (laughs) And you go to to bed 10 to 15 minutes earlier. No, I'm just joking. That sleep is very important. Yes. Um, So symmetry, you you began symmetry before the pandemic. But in the pandemic, we like to say that like mental health and health mindfulness and kind of awareness Mm -hmm. of a lot of this stuff kind of got put in a pressure cooker is what we like to say. It felt like everybody all of a sudden was like, oh, I get it now. I get what it means to like have anxiety. I get what it means to be stressed over every little thing, regardless of if you were before or if, it, you know, it was just added to mm-hmm. during that time. Um, but you mentioned that a lot of these practices are now like in vogue. So I guess like four years kind of coming out of the pandemic, it felt like everybody was talking about all of these kinds of tools that you could have in your tool belt to be able to combat anxiety, combat stress. Why is it important for employers to understand the realities of what stress and burnout can do for turnover, in your opinion? Well, for one, is it's incredibly expensive to replace those employees. I and mean, statistics are usually like one to two times their salary. Uh, for one, they're also going to work better, perform better, uh, and feel better. And as you mentioned earlier in those stats, it's also going to lower the healthcare cost uh, of the company. So, you know, if your employees are feeling better, they're working harder, they're going to be less likely to quit, leave, get burned out, and move on to something else. And then ideally down the road, they're going to have less chronic issues that, you know, we've talked about that a good bit that are going to crop up and cause so much, uh, so many problems for people and companies in general. Kemp, you mentioned that over at Commercial Advisors, um, you went through a year-long um, corporate experience with Symmetry and Taylor. Uh, so I'm curious about multi-generational workforces and how some things are in vogue for certain generations or some things aren't. Some things are considered norms in some ways, some are not. Um, it felt like When I was first graduating from college, it felt like the norm was it was a badge of honor to work late. It was a it was a badge of honor to like be overstressed and take on more than you could, you know, accomplish. It was the way to work your way up the ladder. Um, It was also the norm for my mother's generation to pick one job and stay there for your entire career. Um, So as 
generations in the workforce kind of have different trends emerge. I was curious about the response to what going through the cohort was like at commercial advisors. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think COVID too, there's, there's no doubt it changed the people's, um, you know, focus on like being totally career kind of oriented, that being primary to, you know, the whole transition to work from home. And, you know, a lot of people lost loved ones during that time. And I think it, you know, work, work in general became maybe less of a, less important than, than it, than it, uh, may have been before. Um, so we definitely, had, we had all, all different ages and in, in, in our cohort and, uh, in, in our, in our company. And, uh, but, but I think these, I think these, these things are, they're kind of timeless and they span, you know, they, they span generations. Um, and again, the things that we did together were really fun and, you know, brought, brought people together because you're, you know, one way that you kind of, you know, create instant tribe, if you will, or, you know, bonding is doing, you know, doing, you know, different things together, whether it be yoga or breath work or the, the fire and ice or, um, going to the park and, you know, walking in you na- know, nature, um, doing all the, doing all these different things. So I, so I think it was a way for people, you know, that maybe have been across generations to get to know each other, uh, better, if you will. Mm -hmm. So I think that was another big benefit of it. Plus two, I think for, you know, you do, people do have choices now in, in where they work. And, um, so I think, you know, for us and for other companies, I mean, it's a way to invest in your people and show that you, you do care about them, you know, beyond just, just the work that they do. And you want them to, I mean, we didn't do it just so they could be a, you know, we, we did it because we want, we just want people to be their best. One of our values in our company, the fourth one, it's called co-elevate. And it's basically, we, we always want to be lifting each other up. Right. So, um, if I care about somebody, I'm going to give them feedback and vice versa to help them be, you know, just better. So we're always kind of elevating each other's games. And so this was a way that, that we could do that, but it's just a good way for employers to invest. It's good for their team members and uh, the payback should be good for any company uh, as well. And better productivity, lower healthcare costs, all, all these things that are absolutely 100%, you know, fact-based. For organizations who aren't necessarily able to commit to a year's worth of programming, is there a way that they can kind of get involved with mm-hmm. investing in their employees through your work? Yeah, we also do just single sessions where we come in and discuss stress, uh, give some principles behind stress, the nervous system, uh, go through some breathing techniques and then give the uh, participants three techniques that they can take hope with. Something very simple. Typically something they can do, whether it's first thing to start the day or before a meeting. Uh, Simple techniques like one we call triangle, which is basically breathe in for, say, three seconds, hold for three seconds, and breathe out for three seconds. Just Follow your breath like that for five minutes. We give them recordings as well that they can use. Uh, typically, give them something to help sleep, and then something we call SOS, where you're gonna uh, stress in the moment uh, to help bring yourself down. So we will come in and we'll do single sessions like that, or craft a few together. Maybe they want to focus on sleep with their client, with their employees, or uh, even things like habit building. Because these techniques are great, but if you don't consistently do them, it's hard. So we always have how how to create and build new habits is a good part of that aspect as well. So we do, you know, one session with plenty of clients that we've done around Memphis and uh, around the country too. And then I think too, I mean, I mean, Taylor, you send out emails every, every week with a lot of great content, free content, articles to read, you know, books and things like that. So there's, there's a ton of just great information that Taylor has that I think any employers, HR, or just someone in the company could kind of tap into and provide that to, you know, employees of companies um, because there's, there's just a lot of, a lot of great information out there. Um, yeah. And we have, um, you know, I mentioned the breathing for kids. We also have, uh, 30 days of breathing, uh, which we've given to some companies as well. So they'll take that. And then, you know, the employees will get 30 days. Everything is five to 10 minutes comes first thing in the morning, gives a little why behind what they're doing. Um, and then kind of guides them through a breath session. And then we also have, um, group coaching programs as well, where we're working with individuals one-on-one and a group. Uh, environments too and as part of that we have created a multitude of templates handouts and uh, video modules that we use discussing everything that we've really talked about here uh, kind of given some of the detailed science behind it and some of the things that they can use on those areas too what is the most common misconception about the work that you do 
Good question. Um, that it's all about just, um, you know, some people just think it a kind of like a recovery or um, not necessarily pushing through that stress. So you mentioned, um, you know, when you started work, it was all about kind of grinding at night. Well, you know, I'd argue there are times that's actually what you should be doing. Um, mm -hmm. So it's finding that part of the stress that you really need to focus on and then learning how to dial back. Most people think we're just more on that kind of recovery, relaxation aspect and not as much as pushing through on that stress part. Interesting. Yeah. There, you know, what, one of the things, see, what is it? Uh, there's a great book called, is it Breath by yeah. James Nestor? Yeah. So I'd encourage everybody if you've, if you, I mean, if you kind of like what you heard today, it's a really, really good book and it'll, it'll just blow your mind. Like the science and the, you know, the breathing and the, I mean, it's, it's just, it's just fascinating. Um, but it, but it's just a really, really, really good book. Um, one of the things that I've started doing too, talk about sleeping that I got from Taylor, this sounds crazy, but it's really not, but it's like tape, taping your mouth when you sleep. So seen the this. importance of like breathing through your nose as opposed to your mouth and, and what, you know, how it affects your physiology and everything. It, it's really interesting, but uh, I started doing that at night and it, it's really, and I'm, I'm a, I'm a bit of an optimizer. So like I love data and uh, I love to just be always trying to get better and improve. And so, you know, I can track my, you know, your breathing, your heart rate variability, your sleep, sleep score, how long you sleep, how long you're in these different phases of sleep. And, um, and so that's just something really simple that, you know, forces you, if you will, to kind of breathe through your um, you know, through your nose and, and have much better, uh, better sleep. So there's all these like little, little things out there that when you start stacking them together, really improve the, you know, your, your health and your overall wellness mindset. Um, but that's just another little thing, but that's, that's a great book. And it, uh, it really, you know, helped me see the importance of, uh, yeah, of just very, something very so book. simple as breathing. I think it came out right at the beginning of COVID, right around COVID. It's a, it's a great one. Has your data from your watch improved since you've been taping your mouth? Oh, 100%. Yes. I was oh, yeah. about to say, what, what, what is the data? Is it better? <laughs> no, no. Yeah, 100%. And I, you know, um, another great book, Why We Sleep by Matthew mm -hmm. Walker, talks about the importance of sleep. So, um, you know, just really good stuff on how it's so important, especially like cardiovascular health to prevent Alzheimer's later in life, all these different yep. things. So, like, I am militant about my sleep now. So, I, you know, I, I like s sleep is I Don't super prioritize sleep. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I have no trouble going, I go to sleep so fast at night. So, um, but yeah, so, you know, getting seven hours of sleep, making sure it's quality sleep. Um, you know, where my family makes fun of me, I got my mouth taped, I got my sleep mask on and uh, all these things, but, uh, but it, the quality's there, the, the qual data's there. Quality's there, <laughs> data's there. Um, I think I had a 90 sleep score last night. Ooh. So, yeah, it was pretty good. You know, and we track a lot of stuff with our clients, whether it's the corporate or one on one, and looking at things like resting heart rate, respiration rate, which is something that most trackers now um, will look at, which a lot of people probably don't really understand at all. Um, looking at those things, and you can see even after a couple of weeks of working with someone, the numbers drop pretty significantly. Wow. So people with, you know, you're a healthy, active individual. We want your resting heart rate at least below 60. Um, and some people you look at think, oh, they're very active. But if it's pushing higher and if your breath rate's pushing higher, you're on, in a more stressed state. So even just spending like five to ten minutes a day, you're going to help naturally kind of start to bring that stuff down too. One thing we did in the, uh, in, in the cohort we did, which was cool too, because we wanted to, you know, I, I think it is important to get data and, 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 and be able to measure things and, and see results. So we uh we actually did uh blood tests through inside mm -hmm. tracker oh, so wow. we didn't have access to it but 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 ta but taylor did so you could see people's blood work before the midpoint and then at the end to see how your cholesterol was improving yeah. all these yeah. important markers we also got people that did not have like a garmin device or an apple watch we got uh we 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 got people fitbits yeah. most people had them but some didn't so people could start to track their you know, their heart rate, their sleep and, and all these things. So, because once you're empowered with that information and you see how these things affect it, and then you start to feel better, it's uh kind of a, you know, it, it keeps you going down that, that path. So that was something else that we, yeah. that we did. Um, so, yeah. And if you're a competitive person, that data like personally can help you try to 
do better the next day than you did the first day. It feels like you try to level up on yourself a little bit every day. Like your sleep score is a 90. So now you have to get it higher. Well, yeah. I, I just, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it, that can be a double edged sword too. <laughs> yes, but as long as you're be. generally yep. tre- trending in, you know, in, in the in the in in, in the uh, in the right direction, so. it's great to calibrate and understand what your habits and kind of creating that awareness, like we mentioned. And you know, one of the things with the trackers, like the fitness tracker, is even just your step count. Like so many people say, "Oh, well, I go to the gym for an hour every day, so I'm active." Are you really? Because most likely you're sitting at a desk for the other 18 hours. So what are you, you're training your body just to sit. Um, so, you know, a way to see, oh, maybe you're actually only walking like 4,000 steps. You need a minimum of 8,000 steps a day. Like 8,000 steps, science shows, like Im- improvements in you know, cardiovascular issues, even stress, anxiety, diabetes. Just that's like kind of the minimum number we want to get every day. Um, so being able to show people while you might be working out, are you actually active? Humans were made to move. Uh, we weren't just made to sit at desk and stare at computers all day long. So for listeners who are interested in learning more about symmetry and the offerings there and who don't know where to start, I know you mentioned breathwork is kind of an easier place to start, but where can they learn more? Uh, our website is symmetry.live. On Instagram at symmetry.live, we put out a lot of content. Um, and through our website, you know, you can set up a call uh, to speak with me or my associate Lauren, or we have a ton of free resources, which is a great place to start as well. Another um, kind of access point is TEDx Memphis. Lauren Bessel That's right. is mm-hmm. um, going to be a 2024 TEDx Memphis speaker. So that is correct. Come out to learn a little bit more from Lauren yeah. there. We'll be speaking on all this stuff uh, at TEDx. Exciting. Well, thank you so much, both of you, for making time in your schedule to come share with us. Thank and y'all. as you mentioned at the beginning, Taylor, the first step really is awareness and understanding that all of this stuff does not operate in a silo. The Symmetry Six are all interconnected and are incredibly important aspects of health and well being. So, thank you so much for helping spread the word. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Independent Bank is celebrating 25 years of sharing your stories, building your dreams, and serving you heroically. Find out how iBank can help you achieve your financial dreams at i-bankonline.com. Member FDIC.